Well, hello and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube. It is I of the flirty hands. <laughs> uh, I am going to do a little bit more on our stitched owl piece. Uh, if you've seen part one, you will know that we have um, used ink tens pencils in order to pre-color our background so that we've got something to work on because this this is what we are are going for this is our little stitchy owl and if you pre-color it you've got something to work on little background and you don't need to do as many stitches obviously if you want to fill the whole thing in with stitches then um you know that is completely down to you but um ink tense background and this is as far as we've got now we had his tummy empty but i'm going to take you right down now or maybe lift this up so you can see um what I have used is little scraps of fabric to fill in his tummy area. So um, the little scraps of fabric, I did really tiny ones there to try and get some kind of a feathery effect. But I'm going to cover some of it with stitches anyway. So if you look at this one, this was mainly all bigger pieces. You can do it however you like. You can go for the, you could do the whole area as one big piece or you could split it down to try and get some variation in colour. And that's what I did there. I think there's one piece there. There's a piece on top of it and a piece underneath it. And this one. So, yes, I've been watching a lovely lady called Christine's Creating Craft with Christine. And um, she was showing a way of doing the little, um, cutting down tiny little pieces. And that, that kind of appealed to me. I've seen um, someone do that for a quilt collage before i can't remember who it is at the minute but i'll try and leave some links down to some of the videos i've been seeing um and i thought i'd give that a go to see how that one turns out for this as well so um it's a little bit of fabric collage and all i've used for this if i can find my sticky bit in my, in my crafting box <laughs> bear with bear with it's here somewhere it's an awesome little um, fabric glue pen by Styx, which Annie Claxton, ac bleh, <laughs> restart, Annie Claxton sent me. So it's Annie Claxton from Arty Farty Annie's, and she very kindly, when she bought one for herself, bought one for me as well. That's a really nice thing to do. I have got a different version of this, but I think this, this works super well. And I'm really Im impressed with how that has held that down. Uh, it's a temporary holding pink glue that dries clear that's especially for fabric. Uh, it sticks to, I think it is. Yes, yeah, sticks to. Um, so that is what I used to stick this down with. And um, so, yeah, just go snip happy. <laughs> Get some little scraps, fit them in however you can. It's a bit like a jigsaw, except that you're making up the jigsaw, if you get my meaning. And then you'll be left with something like this. Also, what I did as well was to get my little glittery stars and stick them in place. Those I didn't put, I didn't use this because I didn't want it to be temporary. I've stuck them down with this Aliens Felt and Foam Tacky Glue, which I love and absolutely adore. This is great. I mean, you could stitch these on. It is possible to stitch them on. Uh, it's just really fiddly and I'm trying to make this easy, you know. Um, and this works super well. So that is good. Also, the other thing is this beacon felt glue. That also works really well. So either of those two, whichever you can get hold of the easiest, they're really good. And I would recommend. So that's as far as I got with that. And then the next stage of this is to start adding in the stitching. Um, you can start wherever you like, basically. You could start um, in his tummy, which is just basically a running stitch, or you could do a running stitch into the background, or you could be brave and start doing his face. <laughs> uh, but before that, you're going to need to hoop up your piece. So I decided what I wanted, because I did this in a, um, it was just, I just left the plain wood of the hoop, and that will also be, um, ready for hanging then. Um, 
but what I wanted to do is to make it more decorative now in order to do that I painted up this hoop and this is kind of um, it's kind of a very dark midnight blue I'll show you the paint in a second but then I've gone over it with something called a uh, dragonfly glaze which has given it a nice sparkly edge and I think you'll agree that's much more me <laughs> if you know me and you know my channel then you'll know that that kind of fits perfectly well so these are the things that I used so it was this uh, the Americana mid deep midnight blue to to paint both inner and outer because sometimes the inner shows as well I didn't glaze the inner of it but I did glaze the outer <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat today. Uh, so yeah, it's deep midnight blue. And because I wanted to paint a few more of these up, I got a newer version. They're both, they're both the same. This is just an older one. And I got another one of these because I love this colour so much. It's just beautiful. It looks kind of black here, but it's, it's a very, very deep blue, as it says, a deep midnight blue. And then on top of that, because I'm extra and I like a bit of shunkle and shine, I was watching Elizabeth St. Hilaire videos the other day and she recommended this dragonfly glaze for, it's like a, a top coat. It's a colour changing top coat, so it, it, it moves from, uh, it shifts from red to violet to blue and this is a red violet blue shift that I used for this blue paint so I did use that as well so that's folk art the one is the Americana and the other is the folk art and they, they do this I think it's in six different colorways I got all six just because I wanted to use this for a lot of things I'm not sure if it was actually the red, violet, blue. Let me have a look, see which one I did actually use in the end. Ah, no. Ha <laughs> ha. This was the one. It wasn't the red, violet, blue. I decided to go with the blue, green, gold shift on this one. And I can tell that because this is the one that's open. <laughs> but they're all really good. In fact, let me show you all of them while I'm here. Because they are very very nice and I'll leave a link to where I got these from this one is a full spectrum so that goes through the full spectrum of the rainbow it's called full spectrum shift this one is a violet blue green shift which is a lovely look at that so let's combine those two together shunkle them around um, this one is a red violet blue so you can kind of see the shift in there this one is the blue green gold which is rather lovely this one is green gold and red oh that's very dragony isn't it maybe we'll do a dragon oh it's giving me ideas now and this one is the gold red and violet shift so you can kind of see on the top of there what kind of a, an effect you get now you don't the colour in this will only show on top of a painted surface so you have to put pre-paint your surface first which is why I used that as a base and then that on top I digress you're here for the stitching not for looking at my painting tackle uh, but I thought you might appreciate knowing about that in case you want to do different colourways for your owl I mean you can you can use whichever colours you like for your owl personalise them and make him your own so that is all now ready to be hooped up, which is what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to try and make sure this is central, as central as I can be anyway. Um, you can adjust this anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Does it need to go down a little more? That's about right. About there about there so this is a five inch hoop obviously if you resized your owl to be a different size then you will have to hoop up accordingly let me loosen that a little bit <laughs> oh, don't want it to be super tight i don't know what i'm doing there loosened the wrong bit tightened it rather than loosened it 
and I've shifted my owl. Come on, Owly. Because his head is to a tilt. It's um I'm trying to try and look at the feet to get as uh, central as possible. Let me look over the top of it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a fiddle. Because I'm trying to film this, I'm, I'm trying to throw I'm throwing myself off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna hoop it up and come back so I can look at it properly. Okay, I'm back. Helped to be able to look at this uh, looking over instead of looking at an angle. Uh, if anybody else has hooping tips, I'm happy to receive them. So please leave them down in the descriptions or comments below if you've got tips on how to um, hoop successfully. <laughs> that's not hula hooping, that's hooping up your stitching. Um, although if you have hula hooping techniques, you know, go for it. Um, so this is all, this is all in now perfectly well. And what you want is you want it to be kind of drum like on top. I do know that it needs to be fairly tight, although it can be adjusted as you go along. Right. So the next part of this is the stitching, and I'll go and grab out some of the threads that I use for mine and show you what I've used so that you can then accordingly go and find threads that you would like to use in your piece. Threads that you might want to use. So we have these cotton pearl threads by DMC. These are great to use. Um, got those in a couple of colors that are gonna match my color scheme. Also DMC threads, including the variegated ones. Uh, variegated ones are great, especially if you look at his face there, it goes through a variation and it means you don't have to change your thread. You just keep going with the same thread and it just gives you this lovely variation. For the middle of his face there, I used this DMC thread. So that is that one. And for his ears, I think I used this DMC thread also. For his tummy and his arms, um, I actually used this. Now this is um, this is a thread that is made by Oliver Twists and they um, sell on Etsy but they also have their own shop. But any variegated thread of this thickness, it's kind of a little bit thicker than the DMC. So let me just show you I mean, any will do. But if you look at the difference in thickness, you can see it's just that tiny bit thicker. And that's a variegated thread. So that's what I'm going to start with for his tummy. Um, and it just gives you that little shift in colour because you've already got the shift in colour in your little fabric pieces. And we're going to do a similar kind of thing for that. Um, for this, I am not going to do that bit of stitching this time. I'm just going to keep going down this with the with the running stitches. So I'm going to start that now. I'm going to grab my needle and, and get it threaded up ready so that we can crack on with that. So I threaded up my needle and I've made a little start here. And I'm going to just do running stitches all down his tummy. Uh, because it's hooped up now, you could do some gathering stitches if you wanted to, but I just find it easier to do one at a time with these. And you don't have to go in straight lines. You can you can vary, vary it, straight lines, no straight lines, however you want to do it. I'm just going to give him some shape to his tummy. It's going to slope in slightly and then straighten out and then slope in the other way. And just to give him some little a little feathered tummy. So that's what I'm going to stitch and do now. So it's just basically a, a basic running stitch in and out. And then on the feathers at the arms here, you're going to do a similar thing again. Um, so you're going to, you can either vary the threads if you want to, or use a variegated thread just to go down where his wings are. And I may actually, in that top area, I might just do some satin stitch just to define that top area of his tummy. So I might actually do that. So the top area there, I'll come back to. But first of all, let's get all these running stitches in and away. 
Okay, so I finished his tummy. And what I did also add in was a couple of French knots as well, just to give it some texture. Now what I'm going to do is to do the satin stitch that goes over that little top bit there. Um, it's not going to be pure satin stitch because I want to show a little bit of that fabric coming through. So I'm grabbing off a bit of my thread that I'm going to use for this. I'm going to thread my needle. <laughs> I say that and then it won't. <laughs> it is the curse of the camera. Needle your thread little mantra you have to say to yourself <laughs> okay so I'm going to start here and what I'm going to do is a little up and down stitch and because I've got that fabric underneath I don't need to be super precise at getting them quite next to each other. In fact, I'm going to leave a little gap so that I can see that fabric underneath. And I'm just covering up the area where that fabric is with my stitch. And the stitch is going to get progressively bigger in certain areas and then get smaller again. about there and back down into the fabric yeah. and this way you will see some of the fabric behind it so satin stitch a pure satin stitch you'd have to line the stitches are up right next to each other so that you're covering all of the the fabric but because we have got this underneath then it's saved on thread and it gives you some more dimension it gives you more um texture and dimension to the piece because you've got different colors going on underneath it which i think Add something to the piece. Obviously, these are all choices that you can make. You don't have to do the fabric underneath. You could just do a pure satin stitch if you wanted to. I like all these different textures and colours that poke through when you do it this way. Because you're getting the, the colour from the fabric and the colour from your thread and they're all mingling together. So I'm going to continue with this and I'm just going to cover that top part there with all my little stitches but if you can see it gives a really nice effect. I might even add some more French knots into this bit here I'm not sure yet thinking about it but I'm going to carry on with this bit and then I'll be back. Okay so now I've finished the satiny the rough satin stitch I'm going to call it <laughs> along the top of that bit there which has added some more texture in and now what I'm doing is on the bottom half of this tummy I'm just adding in some little French knots so all you do is you take your thread through you wind it round a couple times hold it down go back in near where you came out and pull hold it onto that thread until it gets to the very end and you can let it go I'll find some other. Let's go up through the fabric, wrap it round a couple times, back in close to where you came out, put it through, hold it down, and I've got some French knots going on, which just adds some more texture into that piece. Because that was a big piece at the bottom that I had there. I just need to wrap it around twice, that's it. Back in, hold my thread until the very end and then pull. So we've got quite a lot of lovely texture going on now on this tummy. And I'm going to put some, if you look at this one, 
along that bit there I put a few sequins but I'm going to leave that till the end so they don't get in my way so the next thing I'm going to do is to do his wings this is um, a closer running stitch I'd say less like a running stitch more like a seed stitch but bigger than seed I don't know how to describe it you're basically colouring in the area but because it's got colour you don't have to colour all of it and so I'm going to thread up but I'm going to keep um, the shapes moving with the shape of his wings so you can see that they curve around and that's what I'm going to do on both of those sides now and then that will be his wings and his tummy completed and so we've completed his tummy and we've done his wings and um, what else we need to do on here is to add in some outlining just to define those little wing parts and what i've done on there is a little back stitch to define those edges uh, but i'm going to leave it here for today and those bits can be completed in the next session so if you want to get ahead um, the next bit is going to be kind of adding in some definition on the running stitches there uh, but the rest of it we're going to leave until next time so hopefully you've enjoyed uh, so far what we've done if you have please don't forget to like and subscribe if you subscribe and click the bell you will get a notification every time I upload a video so that that will be uh, useful to you for the third part of this if you're following along anyway that's enough of my waffle uh, have a very good day and I will see you very soon Bye for now.